All right, difference frames. Now we're getting into motion responsivity. Oh yeah. Finally. Um, all right, so let's turn this on and see what happens. So we're gonna use the camera as a sensor to detect how much motion there is in the scene. Okay, how do we do that? It's really simple, we subtract subsequent frames of video. So motion in the scene, assuming you have a stable camera, your camera's not moving around and that motion in the image is related to motion in the scene, right. um, then if you subtract the current frame of video from the previous frame of video, that you're just gonna get the difference or what's changed from one frame to the next. And if you have a lot of motion in your scene, there's gonna be a lot of change from one frame to the next frame. If you have very little or no motion in the scene, there's gonna be almost no difference between subsequent frames. So if you just subtract subsequent frames and add up all the, diff the pixels that are different, you can get a sense of, you can get a numerical value for how much motion there is in the right. scene. We do this all the time. It's a really simple way to get user input because the user doesn't have to do anything. They're just in the scene, they move around, and it causes a number to go up. And you can map that number to all kinds of things. And we'll right. do that right now. So let's turn on the camera. And um, for those of you who want a little bit more information, if you did a search for frame differencing, you'll get mm -hmm. all kinds of visual um, demonstrations of what we're talking about. Yeah. So, so there you are. Okay, so we have the Q Metro going into our grab. Uh, we're using the FaceTime built-in camera, 1280 by 720. Um, now that's going to go into this object called JIT.change. Uh, Jit so sometimes when you have Q Metro turned on, uh, especially if it's turned on real fast, or if you're especially if you're just using a Metro, right. um, that's kind of why we use a Q Metro. But I still use the JIT.change thing. What that does is it filters out duplicate frames. You really don't want, sometimes Sometimes you can ask the camera to give you the current frame, and just because you're a little bit out of sync with the camera, you'll get the exact same frame twice from the camera in a row. Right. That's no good when we're doing difference frames because that's gonna appear as a sudden absolute zero difference right. between subsequent frames. So you have to filter those, uh, those duplicates out. And it's actually only filters out exact duplicates. And you're never, in the real world, you're never gonna get exact duplicates unless you're accidentally querying the camera um, it, for the same frame twice. So this just totally eliminates that problem. JIT.change is gonna filter out duplicate frames. And then we go into this object called JIT.RGB to Luma. That makes it grayscale. So we're only gonna subtract black and white frames from subsequent black and white frames. So to do in that, to do to get it into black and white, we could do JIT dot, cause, uh, sorry, because the grabber is giving us a color image. To get a black and white image out of the color image, we could grab one of the channels right. and just ignore the other channels, but I prefer to use this RGB to Luma uh, object. This actually just flattens all the channels into a single um, luminance image or, or brightness image mm -hmm. uh, that incorporates the red, green, and the blue but uh, kind of smushes them together into a single black and white. Right. Um, so here we have a RGB to Luma, and what we get out of there is a black and white image at the same resolution, whatever the resolution was from the grabber is the same resolution that's gonna output from RGB to Luma. And then this is the actual thing that does the difference frame calculation. <clears throat> How do I explain it? Okay, so <laughs> it goes into this object called trigger. Trigger is gonna trigger a list and another list. So it says TLL. What that really means is trigger, list, list. Um, it's gonna spit out each of the frames. It's gonna, it's gonna treat the frames of video as a list of numbers. And first it's gonna, it's gonna spit the frames out here to go to JIT.op, and then the subsequent frame is still in the... Uh, so it's held. It's held there, right. So right. the subsequent frame comes out here, the current frame comes out here, and JIT.op, which is uh, lets us do math on matrices, um, lets us do the absolute difference. So one of the operators, JIT.op, you can set it to different operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, mm -hmm. division. Um, there's one operator that we're gonna use called absdiff. <clears throat> That's gonna give us the absolute difference between uh, these two frames, so input frame, input frame, and it gives us the difference between the two. So you can see here, this is the difference frame between the two frames. And if we move around a lot, you'll see that anything that's changed, anything that's different from frame to frame is gonna appear as uh, lighter pixels. Okay, not super visible, so we're gonna go into another op that's gonna uh, threshold those pixels if they're above a certain value. So if the pixels are uh, greater than, we're using the op greater than, and if, the, if they're greater than the value 0.1, then they become pure white. So what's gonna come out of this thing is 
Let's see, um, I'll connect it up. Now we're gonna have frames. Any frame that's above a certain threshold brightness here is gonna become pure white. And we can actually reset the threshold interactively here. So that's a little too much. But here now we have a very sensitive um, motion detector. So anything that's motion is gonna, so when we set it really, really sensitive, we're getting, we're picking up just the, right. the, the noise from the camera. Um, but if we set it just, just right, right, you get um, anything that's moving turns white. And in the next screencast, we'll show how you can count up the brightness, count up all the white pixels, compare them to all the black pixels, and that's going to give you a, uh, a ratio of black to white, which you can use to then you know, determine how much motion there is. All right, cool. So this is very, very basic frame differencing without any bells or whistles. Um, all right, what am I missing here? I don't know, because you're about to get deep into it, so I'd yeah. say let's leave it at that. Okay.